Hey everyone, it's Lee Hoy here, and I've been promising you a video about what you could find in my camera bag. So today's the day that I finally took the time to set everything up and go through and walk you through how I pack for trips. Now this is kind of my gen general packing arrangement for whether I'm doing an international photography workshop or I'm doing one here domestically, or even if I'm just going out and about for the day in the Big Bend area. Uh, before we get started, I hope you'll follow me on Instagram, Big Ben Birding Photo Tours or Facebook, Big Ben Birding and Photo Tours. Appreciate you taking the time to join me today and let's get started. First thing I want to tell you about is the bag itself. This is the Think Tank Airport Roller Derby. And the reason I like this particular bag is that the wheels will rotate and spin in any direction. There's a telescoping handle that comes out of the top where I can slide my laptop bag over that and it's very easy to wheel it through airports. I've taken it through a lot of different ones, up and down the aisle in an airplane, so uh, in, the, in the tarmac, everywhere. I, I love this bag, it serves its purpose well. It fits on the majority of uh, airliners. Uh, some Sometimes when I get on a regional jet, I'll have to have it checked and that always makes me nervous. I've learned do not fly with your lenses attached to your camera. That's when they're more likely to get broken. So having said that, let's get started. First off on the very front pouch, I don't tend to put too much into this little area as it will lift the top of the uh, bag up and sometimes make it harder to get into uh, an overhead compartment. But I do always carry at least one cord that came with my camera for updating the firmware. You never know when a new firmware update might be released and if it has some features you'd really like to have on that. So I do always keep that cord in the top pouch. The main part compartment of this bag has a lot of stuff in it. One of the reasons I shoot Olympus is because my equipment is small, portable, and as you can see, I'm gonna be pulling a lot of stuff out of here. So I'm gonna try to tilt this bag a little bit without dumping everything out so that you can see just exactly how, let me slide this over a little bit, so you can see how I have everything arranged in here, and then I'm gonna pull out and walk for you through what I have in here. First thing I have is my Black Rapid dual strap with Olympus carrying two camera bodies, two lenses is not a challenge. This particular strap is my go-to, most heavily used, because I can put it over both shoulders, takes the weight off my neck. At the bottom, I don't just use the little screw connector at the bottom. I have added a Kirk Enterprises one inch uh, clamp, and what that does is that will clamp onto the bottom of any Arca Swiss compatible plate I have on a body, or, for example, on a lens. So, made for quick release, I can get my camera on and off my strap quite quickly. Oops, my uh, <laughs> lens cap had come off there. So, the Black Rapid dual strap is my go-to strap, the one I use most often. I also will carry in here the Omni Charge. This is a wonderful little portable power pack that has USB-C, USB to it. And with this fully charged, I can uh, recharge my camera batteries in the camera on the go. So it's a convenient little way to carry this in. Uh, you can't put something like that in checked on luggage though, so you do have to pay close attention uh, where you're traveling with that. Now let's talk about some of the other stuff in here. Of course, camera cleaning gear. I always have a bulb for blowing off dust or dry snow. I've always got my lens cleaner fluid and I always carry a bunch of different lens cleaning cloths that I have tucked away in here. Now, right now at this time, I actually have four camera bodies in this bag. I have both my Olympus EM1Xs. One of them you'll notice has an L plate so that if I need to shoot vertical on a tripod for night sky and other long exposures. And this one I just have a simple Arca Swiss bracket on the bottom. And just to help minimize the weight because I did shift to these uh, camera system, to the Olympus system, in order to reduce some weight. So these are my two main pro bodies. As you can see, built-in vertical grips. Uh, they'll hold two camera batteries each. But but the Olympus EM1X are the prime bodies and I always have two on me. I will also have in here the other two camera bodies. This is the OMD EM1 Mark III. I take this with me because the Starry Sky Autofocus, that alone is worth having in your bag. Plus, because it doesn't have a built-in battery grip, it is so light that if I need to get down low and do some macro photography, I can handhold this with flash and get awesome, nice, sharp images using that. So this is the EM1X, I'm sorry, the EM1 Mark III. 
And then one of the newest camera bodies that I was asked to test out for Olympus is the EM10 Mark IV. This is what I labeled in my review for Olympus as the iPhone killer. It will do panoramics like this. It has many of the advanced features of the EM1X and the Mark III and a wonderful little graphical user interface on the back. Some of the advanced features do have some limitations that you might not find on the M1X, but instead of spending three grand, if you wanna spend about 600, you'll get a phenomenal camera. So as you can see, this little bag, I've already pulled out four different camera bodies. Lee, why do you travel with so many different camera bodies? Well, number one, back up, back up, back up. Redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. The last thing I wanna do is miss shots on a trip because I broke a camera body or it went down. Also, these cameras bodies all do different things. I like them for different purposes. So the more I can have with me uh, whenever I travel somewhere, the more versatile I can be. So. Uh, another feature I have in my camera bag for recharging my batteries in camera. I travel with a lot of batteries because Olympus batteries are small. It's a mirrorless camera. Now the batteries last a lot longer than people would anticipate. However, I do have this. It is the Anchor uh, USB-C uh, portable charger, in-wall charger. I can charge four batteries at once by plugging into the Olympus EM1 uh, Mark uh, M1X, and I can charge two batteries at a time in there by plugging this in. So this comes in very handy for trips because by bringing this one item, I don't have to bring four or six different battery chargers with me on a trip. So that saves a ton of room in my bag. Now let's talk about some of the lenses. So first off, I'll pull out one of my main wildlife lenses. That is gonna be the Olympus 300 F4. This case, I have the 1.4 teleconverter still on the lens. I will travel in the area like that, but if I'm flying, I take teleconverters off the lenses and put them in their little case in here. But the Olympus 300 F4 is one of my go-to wildlife, particularly bird lenses. The Olympus 40 to 150 F2.8, one of the best lenses I've ever owned in terms of quality, versatility. I usually put a doubler, uh, the MC20, a two times teleconverter on this body. It's not on there right now. So that's in my bag. I also travel with, uh, you'll notice that this time I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lenses in this bag. So. Uh, this is the uh, 7 to 14 2.8. When I bought this, I thought this would be my most used landscape lens. It is my second most used landscape lens, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. And this is one of the little kind of wider lenses, particularly for a wide angle, but it's still very small. You see fits in the palm of my hand, goes into this bag, no problem. I always travel with the 60 millimeter macro lens, one of the highest quality, sharpest lenses. I think one of the best valued lenses out there on the market today. You'll find now my most used lens, the Olympus 12 to 40. Uh, I lost my lens cap pretty quickly on this one, so I use this little neoprene lens cover. And this comes out of my bag all the time. Great for, for panoramics, great for landscapes. I use it for a lot of things, so this lens gets used regularly. I have the uh, eight millimeter fisheye lens, uh, the rectangle fisheye lens here. This stays with me because it's great for night sky. I have the 12 2.0. This is uh, an outstanding little lens for night sky stuff. And then I also carry the 30 millimeter macro for when I want to do wide angle macro shots. So I have a, you know, a diverse lineup of lenses that you can find in my bag. And again, right now I have seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven lenses in here. So, you know, pretty nice to be able to stick all those in here. I also have, uh, again, one of these is the 2.0 converter and then I have another 1.4. So I travel with two 1.4 four teleconverters and one 2.0. Just depending on the location I'm going, I often like to have that ability to put the doubler either on the 300 or on the 40 to 150 and do that. And then like I said, I carry multiple batteries. I'll, I'll have them in every camera body, plus I probably have six or seven extras. I just see no point in risking missing a great shot because you're running low on um, battery power. I always carry a uh, polarizing filter for the lenses that I will most likely use for water shots like the uh, 12 to 40 and the 40 to 150 I believe are the same filter size. So you always need to carry a little brush for getting dirt off your lens. I always carry a couple of those in here. And then in these little zippered pouches on the side is where you'll find my intervalometers. I travel with two usually. The Fotix Ion, I actually have two of them in here, two of the same one. Uh, I, 
sometimes I'll be shooting time lapses with one camera body and regular landscape shots with another. So these are intervalometers, are programmable, great for doing time lapse or night sky specific exposures. And then I also have in my bag here what's called the MEOPS, if I can pull it out of here, it's somewhere in here, no. Yeah, I've got a MEOPS uh, intervalometer that I'll travel with if I think I'm gonna need that. Most time that will stay at home. I tend to use that out here in Big Bend the most. And then, you know, in this other little pouch, I'll carry some, uh, you know, the little lens end cap covers and the body covers, more polarizing filters uh, in some pouches that stay over here. And again, those are just for when I want to reduce the glare on water or make a, a nice sky pop. So as you can see, this bag, I really can carry quite a bit in it. And again, I like it for the mobility. You'll notice here, I'm gonna just repack it up with all of my gear. And uh, what I have found is that this is a very sturdy, reliable bag. I like how it's built. You know, it's withheld quite a few trips, even bef before COVID and even during. And uh, a lot of this, it packs up really nice and tight. And, the, and the, the more stuff I have in here, the less stuff tends to move around as well. So I just lay my strap on top, come in and uh, zip it up. Okay. And then I am ready to head to the airport and get on a plane to go somewhere really fun. So that's a quick intro to what I have in my camera bag. And again, depending on your gear, you know, you may not be able to get as much in here if you're shooting a full frame system or you've, and, and if you've got, you know, a big 500 millimeter, 600 millimeter lens from another camera system. But one of the reasons I shifted to Olympus is you see how much gear I can now put in one bag. I have not had to pay any excess baggage fees since I made the switch to Olympus. And that was another one of the reasons why I decided to make the change. So again, just a reminder, if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's going to be Big Bend Bird Photo Tours. And on Facebook, it'll be Big Bend Birding and Photo Tours. So if you'd like to join me on a workshop and come learn a little bit more about photography, I'd love to have you join me. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Get out there and go shoot something.